how yeah. is that going to help them in the long run? So I think it is a form of child abuse, um, but that's just 100%. one facet of this. Hi, everybody. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before, or hi, welcome if you're new. My name's Mickey. I'm a therapist, and we talk about therapisty things on this channel. Today, we are talking about Girl Defined again because uh, there is a video that they made called Drag Queens Are a Mockery of God's Design for Womanhood. Full disclosure, I have actually filmed this video before, but the final cut on that one was like not something that ever needs to be on the internet, so we're redoing it um, to make this more constructive, to make this more helpful, to focus on like actionable advice and things like that. So uh, we're talking about that today. I think it goes without saying that if uh, homophobia, like obvious bigoted attitudes toward LGBTQ people is a button for you, this is probably not the video for you. Girl Defined is pretty like upfront and aggressive about um, their hatred of queer people. And so this content can very much be triggering. So uh, please take care of yourself. I'm going to put a playlist up here of like happy fun times if you want or need it. Before we get started, I'm going to give the same caveat on this video that I gave on all of the fundamentalism videos. Um, I want to be super clear. The content that we're making about Girl Defined today specifically, but all of the content that we make about fundamentalism generally is intended to be uh, actionable advice, creating a safe place for people who are deconstructing from uh, religious fundamentalism, and also combating the misinformation and disinformation uh, that these people are trying to spread. As a clinician, I don't take kindly to people trying to spread information that's contrary to the goal that I have on this channel, which is destigmatizing mental health and mental illness topics um, and encouraging people to be uh, their genuine best selves so that they can be healthy and safe for themselves. Um, and so that's why we're talking about this. I don't take any issue with regular Christian or regular religious people. That's none of my beeswax um, and that's not the conversation that we're having. So uh, that said, let's get into the video. Hey, all you people. It's cranberry, hey, cranberry ginger. Won't you listen to cranberry ginger? That is a Christmas Moscow mule, and I want one. Oh my god! Wow! Wow, you guys! If you haven't tried the cranberry ginger beverage uh, from Trader Joe's, you should go get it because it's really good. What? Take us away, babe. That's what we call it. Let's get in the shit. <laughs> We're already in the shit, babe. We need to talk about this. This is something we've been wanting to talk about for a while drag queens. Um, this was in the news a lot, so you probably heard about it, but there was a big drag show and it was literally titled Drag the Kids to Pride, a family-friendly drag show. That's how it was advertised. And basically they were saying, this is the ultimate family-friendly drag show. Come bring your family, bring your little kids. We're going to have drag performers in a nightclub, by the yeah. way. Um, you know, it, there's going to be dancing. And they even said, in fact, we're going to have five spots open for kids to join the stage, to dance with the drag performers. And it's going to be this wonderful family. -friendly. Children dancing? This is disgusting. Family night, you know, let's go. And in fact, when I saw some articles and some videos about this event, yeah. there was a huge neon sign that literally said, it's not going to lick itself. We don't need to give you any more, you know, information <laughs> yes. about that detail. Really you can funny. probably Before get we get too much deeper into this week's video, I want to pause and give a quick shout out to this week's sponsor, Blinkist. As a busy person who is also constantly doing research for things, I am very excited to talk to you about Blinkist because the Blinkist app allows you to understand the most important things from over 5,500 nonfiction books and podcasts with just 15 minutes. They have a huge variety of content that's broken down into over 27 different categories that can help you become who you want to be. In 2023, I want to be a more well-read person and Blinkist is helping me do that. Blinkist just introduced a new feature called Blinkist Connect where you can share two different accounts with no additional cost. So Erin and I have been using this to share the Blink about uh, adult children of emotionally immature parents. It's been wonderfully educational <laughs> for me and just really fun to be able to share that material with someone without having to pay for two separate accounts. Accounts. My favorite thing about Blinkist Connect is that you can keep your list separate. Everything isn't automatically merged, but once they accept your invitation, you have the opportunity to share titles with each other in a shared library. I also really appreciate that I can use Blinkist to listen to a Blink and get the key information about a book or a podcast before I commit to reading or listening to the whole thing. It's not a replacement for reading, but I think it's a really useful way to get a general picture of something before, like I said, you fully commit to it. And so I'm really excited that today Blinkist has a special offer for all of my viewers. You can get 25% off Blinkist Premium and enjoy two memberships for the price of one. Start your seven-day free trial by clicking the link in the description. Thanks again to Blinkist for sponsoring this week's video. Now let's get back into Girl Defined. You probably guess what that means in a nightclub like this. And so here we have this event yeah. and it's mm -hmm. being applauded by so many in society saying this is awesome. You know, these pictures of these kids, um, you know, tipping these dancers who, by the way, are drag queens. So men dressed as very provocative, very, very sexually explicit women in their costumes, in their lingerie-like costumes, yeah. dancing before children, and children are tipping them. Like, it's so perverted. It's so disgusting. It's so shocking 
that parents would think this is a healthy, mentally, you know, healthy thing to bring their kids to. And so we just want to talk about it because truly, as we look at God's design for the man and the woman, drag queens and the celebration of this sort of entertainment is such a mockery on God's design for womanhood. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's just so much to unpack here. First and foremost, I want to talk about the language that we're using here because I think it's worth noting. This is obviously a very extreme example of this. And like, I think Girl Defined generally is pretty low hanging fruit (laughs) content in terms of like how easy it is to disagree with them. But people use rhetoric like this a lot. And I think it's worth educating around because sometimes it's more vague or, or like harder to pick up on this like discussion about how drag is so uh, perverted and this like this environment and this type of costume and these types of behaviors are like such a an unhealthy environment for kids like what we're aiming to do here is stigmatize being a queer person or like an lgbtq person to such a degree that we're insinuating that it's mentally unhealthy or a result of mental illness this is like a very old talking point for uh conservative people religious people Um, people generally who are just uh, bigots about the LGBTQ community. And I want to encourage people to be mindful of this because again, this kind of like goes unchecked, but this attitude that being an LGBTQ person is a result of mental illness or is a result of being like unhealthy or wrong in some way is not fucking true. Queerness doesn't come about because of some childhood trauma or because you've been abused or because there's something wrong with you. We know that being a queer LGBTQ person is just a part of who you are and there's nothing wrong with you. There's nothing that needs to be fixed to like erase your identity it is just part of your identity and it really pushes my fucking buttons when people try to weaponize the field that i work in to insinuate that their political beliefs are correct because like first of all that's bigoted and disgusting but second of all stay in your fucking lane like you're not a mental health professional you don't know dick all about mental illness or mental health profession ethics or like code of conduct either and so don't try to weaponize the field that I spent a lot of time and money also educating myself to be an expert in so that you can pretend to be a little talking head on your YouTube channel. It's bothersome and it's hateful. And and to say like, oh, but we need to be supporting this. Like, no, we are not going to give into the delusion. This is not going to help all of the major mental breakdowns that are going on in our world and suicide. Like, this is not helping it by affirming that, oh, yes, you know, like, you know, one, men can be women or two, men should dress up like women. I just, like, this is why we had to retake this video because, like, already my blood pressure is rising. I'm so fucking mad. This attitude that, like, we should be caring about people's mental health. And I can't say the word on this channel either, by the way, because we get censored. I don't know how the fuck Girl Divine got away with it. But people unaliving themselves and mental breakdowns that, you know, these are things we should be concerned about. And we shouldn't be doing things that contribute to that. I would bet a million dollars that Bethany and Kristen have done almost no meaningful effort or, or work around discovering statistically what protective factors are for people's mental health and mental illness. Chief among them, by the way, uh, what we do know of in terms of protective factors for people's uh, mental well-being is encouraging people to destigmatize their emotions and feel how they feel, which Girl Defined are on record more than once as saying that this is unbiblical, this is sinful, this is wrong, and they do not encourage their followers to do this. So I I'm just absolutely not at all going to believe this sudden out of left field concern for people's mental well-being because they've demonstrated that they don't fucking care. And again, this is what I'm talking about where people who have these bigoted beliefs and want to validate them want to receive validation for them from the public will try to use a bunch of different tactics to validate their own argument when actually it's not based in fact it's not based in evidence there's really no leg to stand on here but we're trying to bastardize uh facts from other places to support this bigoted ideal and it's just shitty and annoying first of all um but also insidious because again girl defines target demo is like young impressionable uh femme people or women Um, and so I am endlessly fucking irritated by the fact that they're pushing this down people's throats because if you don't know better, this might sound like actually factual material, even though it's fucking not. And, you know, put on fake breasts that are way oversized, massive rears, you know, like wear very skimpy clothing and dance around and twerk and do all this stuff. Like, this is insane. No wonder we have problems. But here at Girl Define, we are striving to, you know, share a- Like, is she okay? Like, what? I just don't understand. The other thing about this that confuses me just on a personal level um, is the aggressive and, like, 
fervent energy with which these people are disgusted um, by queer people generally. If you don't want to go to a drag show, like plenty of people don't enjoy drag shows, you know, like not everybody has to like drag also, which is an argument that they will make later that we're trying to like shove drag down people's throats. Like that's not true. Not everybody has to like drag, but it's the same thing as not liking spaghetti. Like I don't particularly enjoy eating spaghetti. I don't particularly enjoy watching movies in the theaters, uh, for example. Um, but neither of those things cause me to be like but like so upset that I can't control myself like I just don't understand like if you don't like it Bethy just don't go like you're not invited anyways but if you don't like it just don't go like it's not that deep and it's also not that big of a deal so someone said following up on that drag event that happened in Dallas Texas someone literally said because of course there was there was pushback thankfully hallelujah there are still yeah. people out there who are pushing who are back and saying, I don't think this is healthy for kids. I don't think this is a really good family event. Maybe try the zoo. Maybe <laughs> try a museum. Like, No one said that you can't go to those things, first of all. Um, but second of all, what evidence do we have to support that this is not a healthy environment for children? Oh, wait. Like, there isn't any. We know that encouraging children to explore their authentic selves, which may include being a queer person or may just include being comfortable around the queer community, is beneficial for people's mental well-being, particularly when they have parents who are part of the queer community. To be clear, by the way, as a queer person, I choose to use the term queer to describe myself. I recognize that not everyone is comfortable with that term. I think it's, like, easier to use in videos like this because it's shorter. But, like, that's a very nuanced conversation for a different day. If you're not a queer person, maybe don't use the word queer. Anyways, but I think that it's really important to honor how impactful and positive and beneficial this can be for, for kids who have queer parents or like queer family members to see people being their authentic selves and to normalize that first of all gender roles are fucking made up um and like gender presentation and expression can look a whole variety of beautiful and wonderful ways that can be safe that can be celebrated that there is this community here who will support you who will love you regardless of what your gender identity your gender expression your sexual orientation like all of those things we are here to like support you and love you and that that's okay and allowed like i i just fail to see <sighs> I just fail to see how this is a negative or harmful thing to kids, especially because we know from the research that encouraging kids to do this is beneficial for them. Okay, let's keep going. Hmm. And so someone came out and said, anyone who thinks drag isn't for children is wrong. Drag is expression and children are such judgment-free beings. They don't really care what you're wearing, just what you're performing. Mm. Oh, really? Yes, they are in many ways judgment free beings. It's because they don't have judgment. They're children. Like yeah. in so many ways, they're being, their mind is being formed, their worldview is being formed, what yes. they think about sexuality, what yes. they think about everything is being formed. It's like Play Doh, like soft Play Doh being molded and formed. And that yeah. is the job of parents to help guide and strengthen and grow their children in a healthy yeah. way so they can grow up to be mentally stable adults. And you're taking. I'm glad that we're just saying the quiet part out loud now and admitting that children are not inherently hateful beings who shoot out of the womb with a judgment or a hatred um, or a con uh, condemnation of people generally and that in order for people to abide by Bethy and Kristen's religion of choice that you have to indoctrinate your children before other people get the chance to teach them about not being a hateful human being. Um, I think this is <laughs> refreshing for girl to find it. Just be honest that like the reason we're upset about this is because we take issue with people trying to teach our kids to not be judgmental and that it's really putting a damper on our ability to indoctrinate our kids to be hateful and judgmental people. Making young children so impressionable they don't really have a grasp on what's happening in the world and you're exposing them to such sexually explicit perversion. Like, how yeah. is that going to help them in the long run? So I think it is a form of child abuse. Um, but that's just 100%. one facet of this. The other I will not and cannot deal with Girl Defined actively getting on their channel to say that parents making decisions about the type of media they're allowing their own children to consume is child abuse. When Bethy and Kristen have indirectly, um, at least to my knowledge, indirectly, potentially directly, uh, lent their public support for people like uh, Michael and Debbie Pearl, who literally have participated in perpetuating child abuse, and in some cases, the death of children. Their main facet is just the mainstreaming of drag, the, and how there's, like, you were telling me about a show that's really popular for, like, oh, yes. teens uh -huh. there's and, a like, new young show. People. I can't remember the name of it, but it's either come out or it's coming out, and it's basically, they take a few young kids um drag you know that are drag stars and they get to basically perform and it's a whole reality show about these kids and so the normalization not only of that but you know you have like the library readings drag queen story hour and yeah. just this massive over sexualization 
of these adults, which is so creepy to me. Adult, typically men, already dressed up like women, now preying on these young children, you know? Literally, like, parents are just handing them over. And I... Do you want to know what institution historically has a history of preying on and grooming and abusing children? The church. There are literally zero documented cases. This is like a, a sort of offshoot of the insistence that trans people um, are preying on children by using the bathroom. This, first of all, this is not true. And I also am annoyed because Girl Defined does this a lot where they talk about things that they don't, they clearly they don't understand. Um, I think it's important to differentiate drag and being trans because those things, it's like a Venn diagram. Like they can exist together for sure, but they're not mutually inclusive of one another. Drag uh, performers are not inherently trans and trans people are not inherently drag performers. Again, sometimes they overlap, but that's not uh, the same. But this like attitude that being a drag performer, first of all, is like over sexualized when like sometimes it is, yes, especially when the show shows are uh, like 18 and up or 21 and up. But insinuating that the costumes that drag performers wear are in intentionally sexual to be consumed and viewed by children is just disingenuous. This is not fucking true. And no one is preying on children. Like again, there are zero documented cases of this happening. This is not a real thing. Like people don't become drag performers or pretend that they're trans to prey on children. Uh, because the reality is the vast majority of child sexual abuse is perpetrated by somebody that the child already knows. This image of like a dark, scary, like villain hiding in dark alleyways and lurking in bathrooms is not a real thing. It's much, much more likely that uh, if a child is going to be abused, it's going to be by someone that the child already knows and trusts. Um, and we're choosing to ignore that fact. They might not even know that, honestly. I wouldn't be surprised if they don't know that. But again, this is like an important thing to educate people about. I am not trying to insist that everybody like drag or go to drag or take your kids to drag, but please know that these talking points about drag being fundamentally unsafe or that this is an environment that kids are being preyed on is literally like factually false. I don't even want to know, you know, like 15 years from now, 20 years from now, the stories that are going to come out and I think there's going to be a massive change because right now, oh, us there? as adults are the ones putting our children right. in this situation, putting them. They can't in even the hands consent, of, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, now we fucking care about consent, Kristen. Okay, first of all, um, I'm going to link an article in the description um, that's a little NPR write-up just about the history of drag that I thought was really useful as an accompaniment to this video. It's really, really important that we acknowledge that drag as a cultural phenomenon is not fucking new. Drag has roots in performance all the way in like ancient Greece and other like parts of uh, ancient history. Drag is again, quite literally not a new phenomenon, but also something that far and away people who are exposed to drag and have benefited from being part of the drag community or like uh, part of the queer community that enjoys drag shows, um, that this is validating for our identities. Like having a community of people who get you, who are safe for you, who understand you is a beneficial and protective factor for our mental well-being, our physical well-being, um, and just generally feeling at home and, and like at peace in the world. There's no expose that's going to come out 20 years from now about the rise of drag because it's already happened. Like the drag has been happening. It's going to continue to happen. This is not a new phenomenon that just because Bethy and Kristen have discovered drag race and they're confused and, and upset set by it. <laughs> that doesn't mean that this is new or scary to people. Yeah, I just am fucking annoyed by this. But also, I want to talk about the consent piece. Kristen and Bethy uh, consistently and regularly talk about biblical gender roles and how important it is for a wife to be sexually available for her husband and all of those, thi all of those things. They perpetuate this very problematic worldview um, that lends itself to abuse and assault uh, pretty easily. It can like roll downhill that direction pretty easily. And they have no concern about the conversation for consent or what's good or safe for people, um, particularly women in this community. They don't care about that. They're willing to look the other way and to not address those things because it's convenient for them and because it fits their messaging. But now all of a sudden we're concerned about consent. This is what I'm fucking talking about. Like I am so endlessly fucking infuriated by Girl Defined trying to co-op terms from cultures that they've actively and like boldly and aggressively turned their back on to make their point now. Like, no, I don't think so. You don't get to be a person who talks about like consent for kids when you're out here talking about, first of all, uh, like using corporal punishment with your children. But second of all, when you actively uphold and, and perpetuate a culture that strips people of their ability to provide enthusiastic and safe um, consent as adults just told this is good this is healthy go for it like this is just the you know 
even taking young boys and dressing them up like over sexualized yeah. women, um, you know, grown men and women who think that's like mm-hmm. hot or whatever. That is just horrific to yeah. think that we are doing this to our children. And so it's so important to get back to the basic fact that we have a designer we have a God who loves us. We have a God who cares about us. And he did not uh, make a mistake when he chose to create the male and the female from the beginning of time. He was extremely intentional. That's literally not true. I think this is also worth addressing. This is a really common talking point for bigoted people generally. This idea that like biologically there's only two sexes and so therefore, you know, God doesn't make mistakes or whatever. First of all, I want to be clear. Nobody who is trans or occupies a sex or gender identity that's outside of the binary is a mistake, which I think is also funny that Girl Defined sort of talks about it in this way because it's just insinuating that trans people aren't mistakes, which is fucked up. But also biologically, factually, uh, the idea that there are two sexes is false. Like, that's just not fucking true. Intersex people are real and have existed for, like, the entirety of the human race um, and will continue to exist. But also, um, sex as a concept is much more complex than we think it is Um, on a cellular level, on a chromosomal level. There are a lot of different options, I guess, (laughs) that can manifest themselves. This idea that, like, you can either have two X chromosomes or an X and a Y chromosome and that's your only option. Like, that's not fucking true. That's not fucking true. Um, But also the physical presentation of people's genitals very um in like like naturally uh biological sense um and so using this as a a basis to try and shit on trans people is like first of all not even fucking factually true but second of all just fucking hateful because again i'd like to point out that kristen and bethy uh proudly belong to the political party that insinuates or, or like aggressively advocates for people to like mind your own business and like the government should stay out of my business and like no one can tell me what to do except when it's other people though like i want to tell other people what to do just like don't tell me what to do mostly like this is a problem again this is just like a hateful belief to perpetuate because also if Kristen and Bethy aren't trans good for them then that's all that you need to worry about that the conversation ends there that is the extent of the work that you need to be doing about your approval or disapproval for trans people if it's not you um then it's none of your business you don't get to make this decision or this judgment about other people because their lives quite literally don't affect you which is another thing that we're going to talk about in a minute and i'm going to talk about it now i guess um i'm just endlessly frustrated by this attitude that people choosing to create safe community for themselves and within themselves is a threat to people like kristen and bethy because again First of all, you're not invited. But second of all, giving people the the right and the opportunity and the time and the space to create their own communities for themselves is kind, is compassionate, is a protective factor in um, our mental and physical well-being, but also it doesn't take anything away from other people. This insinuation that popularizing drag is taking something away from Bethy and Kristen and making the world unsafe for them and their kids is just quite literally not fucking true. The world is a big, giant, beautiful place with lots of room, infinite amounts of room, maybe not physically, but figuratively, for all of us to create community and safe spaces for the things that matter to us. Um, And I really want to encourage people to divest from this belief system that if someone else does something then it might take something away from me because that's not true and creating man Mm -hmm. and woman and putting them within the context of marriage putting sex and intimacy within the context of marriage not for just general consumption but as a beautiful celebration of that covenant and a beautiful um ultimately a reflection of god's desire to deeply know us and us to deeply know him in an intimate um close Mm -hmm. relationship um and so it's heartbreaking to think that we have strayed so far from God's design and we think, wow, well, true happiness is rejecting everything that our creator, our designer, whether we acknowledge him or not, has. People are not Gucci bags. Like, I <laughs> just don't understand this, like, designer rhetoric. It's not really doing what they think it's doing. It feels very dehumanizing to diminish people to their biological presentation at birth or their like physical presentation at birth, rather, but also to insist that your entire identity is made up of your genitals, I guess. Like, this is so dehumanizing and diminishing and such a reductionist way to view human beings, which is not surprising to me because in order to function in this fundamentalist environment where things are very black and white and there is no room for nuance, I think it necessitates that attitude. But it is still a goddamn shame because people are such beautiful and wonderful and complex little creatures. And I just, especially in the work that I do, like, this has become more and more apparent. There is not one right way to be a person. There's not one right way to live 
live your life. And it's sad to me, honestly. Like, I, again, I think this is one of those moments where it's probably the closest thing to pity that I'll ever feel for Kristen and Bethy to not be able to really fully absorb the complexity and the beauty that is human life in that we get to do whatever we want. Like, as long as we're not hurting people, obviously. But we all get, it's like a choose your own adventure book, except it's real life, man. Like, it's so cool and it's wonderful and beautiful. And I just am really sad that these people have chosen to entrench themselves in this worldview that puts people in one of two boxes and that's it. That's your whole fucking life and you will never evolve past that. This is just sad. Set forth um, and we're going to bend all of these gender norms. We're going to completely that was not real. male and female and we're going to not mash it up, mix it up, chop it up, literally inject it and come up with whatever we want. And I just think it takes common sense to look at and go, wow, this is a disaster. No wonder we are having so many mental problems and like anxiety problems mm -hmm. like we are literally setting ourselves up on a trajectory of disaster and acting like it's the solution yeah. first of all no we're not second of all what we're not gonna do bethy is invoke concern for uh the mental well-being of trans and queer kids as the reason that you disagree with this because we know statistically factually the research is very fucking clear that trans children um particularly uh trans children of color are disproportionately at the highest risk for Fidelity, for mental illness, for abuse, um, for homelessness. There are so, so, so many risk factors that come along with embodying or having um, a trans or queer identity. And the reason that this is that way is because the culture that we exist in is inherently transphobic and hateful to people. I am just so fucking <laughs> grossed out that Bethy and Kristen are sitting here trying to talk about, like, no wonder we have so many problems. No wonder this is all uh, falling apart or is all so bad because like, look what we're endorsing. Like, nope, that's not fucking true. We know from the research that providing people a safe place to be who they are and encouraging, validating, that's the word that I'm looking for, validating their identities and providing them with love and safety above all is the safest thing that we can do as parents, as caregivers, as community members. And I just, I'm just tired, man. Like this is so disheartening and frustrating and I just am so fucking disgusted that Bethy and Kristen are really sitting here pretending to care about these kids when like first of all no you fucking don't because you've actually made content that shits on these people on your channel before but if you really had a care and concern for these kids why are you not choosing to be a validating and loving person why are you not choosing to learn anything about the community that you're sitting on your channel uh, making like what a 20 minute 10 minute video just blathering about how much you hate them like you genuinely have no care or concern for these people and it just is so disingenuous so as, you know? as Christians specifically like obviously we're coming from a worldview we're coming from looking at God's word as our foundation for truth we as Christians have to be so intentional to follow our creator you know we're told and society tells us, look within to discover who you are. Look at your feelings. Mm. Look at what you're into. Look at your past. Look at your present. Like, look within to define yourself. But when we look in God's word, we really see that we discover who we are by knowing who God mm. is. We don't discover ourselves apart yeah. from God. We learn who we are because we're informed yeah. by God. And as we look in God's word, we see, like you said, he has a very clear plan for the male and the female. In Genesis 1 and 2, we see. No, we're not talking about that. Um, I want to address this also because, again, we talked a little bit about what a sad and reductionist way this is to view humanity, but I think it's worth discussing again through this lens because Bethany and Kristen's insistence that your identity comes from the way that God defines you in their uh, holy text is odd to me. <laughs> I think it's fair to say anybody who spent any amount of time looking at or reading the Bible understands that there's not enough source material there to form a fully fleshed out human identity. Again, human beings are beautifully and wonderfully complex creatures and there is so much nuance in life generally, but especially as like culture continues to evolve um, and we develop new parts of our culture and new parts of life, it's fair to say that a small book doesn't have enough source material to directly instruct which parts of your identity are like correct and which parts are bad. And so I just, I'm so confused by this insistence that like we know what the right choices are because it's it's in here, except that there is so much of life that's not accounted for in there. I want to be super clear. This is something that uh, as a, a clinician, um, folks who are 
uh, deconstructing from religion have brought into the room and that this is a conversation, first of all, that you can very much have with your therapist, um, but that will be continually evolving over your lifetime. Again, I want to honor that being a human being by nature is complex and confusing sometimes. And it's necessary for us to continue to reevaluate the question of who am I? What is my identity? What do I care about? What are my values and beliefs? What are the things that I'm bringing to the table? Who do I want to be? What is the legacy that I want to leave in this world? How do I want people to view me? How do I want to uh, participate in relationships with others? Like these are all fundamentally important questions to who you are. But I also want to talk about how our identities are sometimes built up of these like little things. This is a trope that people commonly fall into. It's a very common question that therapists get asked, by the way, like, how do I know who I am? I don't have some like big epiphany about who I am. Um, oftentimes the work starts with really small little things. Identifying your preferences for things, your likes and your dislikes is part of your identity. Being a person who likes to go for runs versus going for walks can be part of your identity if you want it to be. Being a person who likes video games versus likes reading books, like these are, or maybe a person who likes doing both, I don't know, like these are all parts of our identity um, that can make up a fuller picture of a whole human being. I really want to encourage folks to not get sucked into this trap that you will just one day get shot with a, a bolt of lightning and like know your identity, because that's not true. Really discovering your true identity requires a curiosity about who you are like continually, every moment, every day, you don't, not like that, like you don't have to be thinking about it every moment, every day, <laughs> but taking stock of like who you are, the things that you like, what matters to you, where do you want to go, where have you been and does that matter to you? These are all useful conversations and questions to be asking yourself. And so again, this insinuation that like, because in this particular piece of text, there is a uh, scripture about gender or uh, marriage, for example, that's it that's your whole identity, you're done. That like, that's not true. I, and I think also the thing that pushes my buttons about this is that Kristen and Bethy know that this is not true. Because if that were the case, they wouldn't be participating in like identity building things like having food preferences, like having aesthetic preferences for their clothing or their homes or their lives. They wouldn't be participating in any of these things, except that they are. And so like, again, I just really want to draw attention to the fact that our identity development isn't one or two really big questions. It's a series of small questions that again will evolve and change over time, which is perfectly okay and very normal. And, and like this line of thinking is disingenuous, but also false. He, God making, like you said, di distinctions. He made a man, a male, and he made a female, a woman. And it's so clear that in society we're told, you know, men can be women, women can be men, anyone can be anything mm -hmm. really. And it does get so confusing. It does get so compli complicated. And if your framework is that you have to look within and you have to find and discover who you are, and now you have like a thousand options for who you can yeah. be, that is so hard. That is so scary. And it's, and even if you think you find who you are over time, it could change one year, two years, yes. five years, it could be different. But when we look I at know. God's word, it, it honestly erases the confusion. Like there's so much confusion. There's so much dysfunction. Which is sad. And we look at God's word and we see the simplistic it's truth true. that in the beginning, he created them male and female. He created them in his image. And this is what I'm saying. It's confusing to have to make these, like, don't get me wrong. It is confusing. There is a reason that as a clinician, I've gotten asked this question many times because it is confusing and it can feel very overwhelming. I super want to validate how overwhelming it can feel and how much of a big undertaking it can feel to try to discover your identity, especially when you have childhood trauma. Be very kind to yourself if you are parentified or you have childhood trauma of any kind, because that really does a number on our ability to safely develop identity over time as children and adolescents. But just because it's confusing or overwhelming sometimes does not mean that it's not a uh, an endeavor that's worth undertaking. This is still very uh, life-giving and helpful and like peace-giving uh, work to be doing and also not something that we can escape. I also really want to talk about this because Kristen and Bethy speak about this as if to say, if you're a Christian and you believe our very specific brand of Christianity, then you can escape the confusion, the overwhelm that comes with life. You don't have to think about it. You just don't have to think about it. That's not true. That's simply not the way that the human brain works. We are wired for connection. And that connection causes us to seek out similarities in groups and community with people who identify with parts of our identity. So there is a reason that Kristen and Bethy are probably more apt to be friends with people whose homes are decorated like Joanna Gaines because they like that about themselves and about their community. Do you see what I'm saying? Like even something as small as preferring a, a red floral print shirt can be a, a commonality 
a piece of an identity and something that feels important to you. Um, and these are things that drive human connection. It is impossible to escape identity development. Oftentimes we're just not aware that we're doing it because we don't label it as identity development. That's neither here nor there. Maybe we'll make a whole, like, a whole video about identity development later. Um, but I just want to encourage people to be wary of rhetoric like this because saying I can sell you essentially um, this version of life that doesn't include confusion, overwhelm, bad feelings, hurt feelings, fear, because like he just takes care of it. God just does it for you. You just check your little boxes and you're done. That's not real. That's not true. And this is such a harmful and predatory tactic to be using to try to evangelize people into a religion that far and away is abusive, is a, a terribly scary environment for fem or afab people, uh, lends itself to abuse a lot of times. There's lots of secrecy and like problems, just problematic, bad vibes in this community. <laughs> and using this rhetoric is just so predatory and they're trying to suck people into this and it bothers me a lot. So the fact that I'm born with a female body informs me of God's uh... intention. Me. It is a part of God's holistic plan for who we are. And I can look at my body and see I'm a female, therefore God made me to be a woman. Therefore, I will look at his word to see what does it mean to be a woman? How do I live out my life as a woman distinct Ew. from a man? And same if you're born a man. And so as we submit our lives to the authority of God's word, yeah. we recognize him as a good father. It clears up so much of the confusion and brings so much clarity. We discover who we are by knowing who he is. No. Um, the other thing about this that I want to address really quickly before we wrap it up is this idea that um, having certain genitalia equals your gender identity, which therefore equals the way that you're supposed to behave. This is oppressive. This is inherently uh, an oppressive and abusive belief system per to perpetuate. This is attempting to control people's thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, which is a common tactic in some other communities. Um, but also like not fucking true because th th this is the thing. If you follow this through line, right? That like Kristen has a vulva, therefore Kristen is a woman, and therefore Kristen should be submissive, be feminine, have babies, I don't know, whatever the fuck else they say that women are supposed to do in their communities, right? They don't do all of those things consistently. I guarantee fucking tea you. Kristen has worn like a baggy t-shirt and sweatpants before, which is not a very feminine thing to be doing, but I guarantee you that she does it because it's comfy, because everybody does it, because it's a normal part of life. It doesn't really matter what your gender identity is. I think everybody has had a day where you just feel really comfy in like a uh, gender amorphous clothing, right? That's part of human life. I think everybody has had a time where they don't want to take somebody's fucking advice, regardless of what genitals they have, because they're just wrong. Sometimes people are wrong. And I guarantee you that Kristen, at one point in her life, or Bethy, at one point in their lives, have chosen to not be submissive to somebody who has a penis because they are demonstrably wrong, which is not very feminine. And that's not a very good way to be living a feminine life. But they do it anyway. And this is what I'm saying. Like, I... Again, I don't take any issue with people choosing to live their own lives in the way that they want to. That's none of my business. But the problem that I take with this is that they're trying to suck people into their community by selling them this, what is the word I'm looking for? By selling them this vision of like a confusion and fear-free life so long as you do what you're supposed to do, except that they don't even do that. This is very much the rules for thee but not for me thing. Um, and they're trying to suck people into this community that again is like abusive and shitty and just a bad time for most of the people involved um, based on this like bill of goods that just is not real. It's not real. And the whole, the whole big push for drag queens to be mainstream, the confusion around sexual identity mm -hmm. and all of that, it can feel so hard to like, to push back or resist because we're told that we're hateful. We're yes. told that we're bigoted. We're told yes. we're transphobic. We're told yes. all of these things if we don't jump on board, but we have to be women who stand solid on the truth of God's word and say, that is confusion. That is craziness. Like that is truly just, okay. just like the brokenness of our society yeah. being lived out. And we have to fight against that and say, God has a much better plan with compassion, no, you don't. speaking truth and love and say, like you really don't God's word. He cares for you. He made you. He knew you when you were like a tiny, Shh. Um, the other thing about this that I wanted to address is this attitude that Bethy and Kristen have that other people, people who are not AFAB people identifying or being women, uh, take something away from them. This is like real small identity energy. Um, this is like, it's giving insecurity. I think it's really important to call this into the room because this attitude that like other people being women who I don't see them as women means that there's less space for me to be a woman is categorically false. This is not true. This is like some real turf shit. And I just am very frustrated by this attitude attitude that 
turning a blind eye at worst um, or being supportive of uh, trans women, of like women who, again, aren't AFAB, is like taking something away from you, is rooted in this feeling of scarcity and this idea that if I give uh, love, support, empathy, space to other people, they will take something away from me. This is inherently a capitalist and colonial ideal. And I think we as a culture really would benefit from divesting from this because it creates it creates a lot of anxiety and fear in people. And it also creates this uh, crabs in a bucket mentality where like we have to pull each other down in order to feel like there's space for me. And that's not fucking true. If you are a person who's struggling with this, first of all, I want to normalize this is very human. This is a lot of uh, common work that folks are doing. And this is very much a conversation that you can ho host with a therapist. And to be clear, I'm not specifically speaking about uh, just the belief that validating the existence of women who aren't AFAB. I'm talking about like generally this feeling of scarcity. This is very much a conversation that you can host with a therapist. And again, like very human work that can be done. However, this feeling that might exist within you is not an excuse to push other people down, to shit on other people, and it does not give you carte blanche to treat other people like garbage because there's like fear and anxiety that lives in you. This is a byproduct of living in a capitalist system and a colonial system um, that sucks all of our joy out of regular life. However, it is something that we have the responsibility to unlearn so that we don't hurt the people around us. And I'm super fucking disappointed, not surprised, but disappointed that Christy, Christy, <laughs> Christy and Bethy are perpetuating this on a very public platform little baby and he has a good plan for your life yeah. we actually unpack this in much greater yeah, no detail. okay we're not listening to the rest of this i think it's just a minute of them talking about their podcast that's close enough let's scoop okay i think it goes without saying that this is uh all bad and not something that i would endorse or encourage people to consume again i haven't said this in a while um but i have talked about it before please don't go and hate watch their channel or subscribe to their channel so that you can like dunk on them on tiktok or whatever like don't do that Please don't feed their algorithm because first of all, it enables them to get sponsorships and to make money off of their bigotry. But second of all, um, I think we uh, as a community would do well <laughs> to try and as much as we can not engage with the content so that it doesn't get spread to other people because this is just so insanely harmful and hurtful and like the opposite of all of the things that we know about uh, current mental health advice and like work and things like that. So thank you again to Blinkist for sponsoring this week's video. And again, if you guys like this video, like the video, subscribe to the channel. We do a cute girl defined educational moment every now and again. So I'd love to have you stay and then share the video to help the channel grow and tell each other grow. And I will see you guys next time.